Hi everyone, David Maley here from Tech Know How. We're going to go over some really cool stuff today. We're going to do predicting future stock market prices with additive regression in Python. As you can see right here, I'm in Jupyter Notebooks, and we're going to use the NVIDIA data set I have from Yahoo Finance. If you need to know how to do that, how to get that, watch my other videos. They tell you exactly how I download that data for a month, a year, or up to five years or more of data, depending on what uh, stock market symbol I'm looking for, what company or ETF, and uh, what data is available based on that. So without further ado, let's get into this. So uh, it's a beautiful Saturday morning, wonderful day to learn additive regression. So I'm not going to really go in depth into all the code behind it. I've got it down below. I'll just walk you through a little bit of it. Um, but if you really want to see piecemeal everything, go to our other videos on that and they'll show you that. This is just a quick walkthrough on how I'm using additive regression in Python on NVIDIA. So basically here, then this is how you would write up a, um, a process or an analysis like this. For a professional, you want to hand it off to a marketing executive, a uh, data science executive, or somebody like that. So this is how you professionally do that. This is all in Markdown. And you see it right up here, Markdown, in Jupyter Notebooks. So again, the purpose here is to create a quick way to predict time series based data using GAM or generative additive model. What that means there's multiple parts to it and they learn as they go along. That's all ad additive regression is. I mean, there's more to it, but it takes these parts and learns its machine learning and gets smarter as it goes along. And I'm going to go over also, so this is from Facebook profit derived algorithm. Facebook uses this to kind of give you better ads suited to what your interests are, and also to serve up other results based on what you're looking for. Um, and again, it's basically additive regression. Um, and also I wanna show you how data length or amount of data can determine best fit and more accurate results. So in some cases, this uh, general additive model might be great, and in some it's not as good. I'll show you that, depending on the length of data that you use. All right, so our, our example is NVDA or NVIDIA. You can see it right here. And um, if you do need to uh, install some things like a different version of Pandas, the code is here, but it's all some other videos. So I'm not going to go over, over that. That's what this is right here using PyStan, Pandas, FB Profit, and Honda uh, FB Profit over here. So we load the libraries in. You're going to do these things like importing GC, TQDM, all this stuff. I'm not going to go into that. That's in other videos I have on here, okay, including profit, time, delta, date, uh, date time, all this stuff. Um, once you have that in there, you're going to load in your data. So you've got to have five years. Well, in this case, I'm using five years of NBDA. You can use whatever you want. You go into Yahoo, get your data out. I've got them other videos. It shows you exactly how to do that. Okay, look on my channel for uh, how to download uh, stock market data from Yahoo. You'll find it quickly. Um, here's the data. I'm showing it right here. When I print stock DF, I put in this data frame from the CSV file I downloaded from Yahoo Finance, and it shows you the date, open, high, low, close, adjusted close, and the volume. Obviously, we're going to be interested in one thing, the end of the day, close. The high and the low, they change throughout the day. There's a lot of variability there. The adjusted close, you actually want the close. Okay, and the volume, as you can see here, changes. It's very variable. You don't want to use volume for that. You want to use the close. So once we have that, we'll make it look a little prettier. We use stock DF. That shows it right here. It open, high, low, close, adjusted, close, volume versus up here where it's print stock DF. Since it's a data frame, you can just type stock DF, and there it is. We're going to change the date, the date column formatting from month, date, date, year, 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 to swap, swap around year first, month, and then date. And uh, this is needed for the profit formula. Uh, so what we're doing here is stock DF, date DS equals pandas to date time. And we're just using this formula right here to do that. It gives me this right here. So the difference is that one ends on volume. Now we've got this date underscore time series column, which is what we've added to it. See how it's different year, month. Day. Okay. So once you have that, stock underscore DF dot info gives us this. That tells us what the data type is for each column. And we're going to create a new data frame stock DF2. The reason why I do this, I don't like to change my original data. Otherwise, I have to go and re-import it again if something goes wrong. So I put it as this stock underscore DF2. Stock data frame goes in there, and I'm putting in the 
underscore TS, that new column I put in there and the close price. So then once I've done that, I want to visualize the data, right? So I'm going to use this code right here. This is all in another video I served up prior. You can go look at it. It's going to tell you how I did this, uh, the graphing the data columns and putting the nice, you know, column headers and all this stuff, title and all that stuff to it. Basically, you end up with here is this. This is the closing price history for NVIDIA since 2017. If you look at that, it starts over here and goes all the way here. It's a very kind of an uptrend. You can obviously see it there. But does that mean it's going to always go up? Well, let's see. So we load profit. That's this PR equals profit, PR dot fit graph data of our graphing data, right? Once we've done that, it's loaded in. And then we do this uh, future PR dot make, which is PRs from profit. Make future data frame, periods equals two, frequency equals minimum. We get this. See this? So based on our future using 15 periods going forward, 150 days going backwards. That's at negative 150 there. And you can get all this code again from the previous videos I have on my channel. This is just a quick walkthrough using NVIDIA. Okay. Frequency equals weekly. That's what that W is for. You can use daily, monthly, whatever. But in this case, I'm using weekly. Look at this. Now, when you look at this, it shows that whole data from 2017 onward. But the problem with this is I told you it's got that huge uptrend. So it makes it go look like it's going up, right? So that's our, you know, our uh, forecast going forward. But look at the swing in the data in there. See how it's it's basically as big or bigger than the projected going forward as high and low. That's not good. So on a visual, that's got too much data in it. So you can actually have too much data that can really skew your forecast and it doesn't look real a, a very trustworthy or a very accurate uh, look to it because of the swing in that data <clears throat> so once we have that <coughs> we need to get the forecasted values based on what we have <clears throat> so we use forecast close prices negative 365 what that does it gives me the forecasted prices and it goes back and gives me all of these and I can use this all the way out, P hats, all this stuff, which gives me our yearly, or Y hat, I'm sorry, um, which gives me our forecasted prices and everything. We can filter this data set to be year to date only. So remember that was five years. So I can use this and forecast this to be greater than or equal to, in this case, I'm using uh, 2021 401, but I could use 2022-0101, I could use year to date only, I can use whatever I want. In this case, I'm actually not doing year to date. It says it here, but that's fine. I've changed it to be uh, from 0401 of 2021, which is April 1st. So that's basically, what, 10 months of data. So let's take a look at that. Once I do that, and I can switch it to anything I want, um, we use this and we look at the data, we load it in again for profit, and we go here and we've got, again, two periods, on before in the future and what do we have here so we're in this case 601 onward we're using here and if you look at this we've got 15 periods forward 150 days going backwards and look at that so if we go from 0401 onward now remember the difference is we're using this for our predictions right versus the full data going in so keep that in mind and what we've got here is look at this, look at the fit of that as we go through there. And it's telling us it's going to go downward trend based on data from April 1st of 2021 to today. So, and look at the fit. The fit is a very good fit of the data. There's a little bit that comes out of it here and a little bit here, but nowhere near the swing of that one that was cut through here. And we had all that above and all that below. So much better fit, more accuracy. And then we can get our forecast values again, forecast, close prices, negative 50. And uh, what we're doing here is looking at this, it gives us all of our trends, Y hat lower, Y hat upper, uh, all these values. You can go and figure out, you know, you can use that to actually predict based on this, what the uh, closing prices will be, um, weekly prices, all that stuff is in there. So that's how you forecast quickly with additive regression. We didn't go into the depth of, you know, here's what this line of code is. Here's what this line of code is, because I've already done that for you in my other videos. You can go back and watch those. Um, in this case, based on this data, this 2021-0401 and, and the future current is a much better, more accurate uh, forecast than using 
going back and using five years of data. Now I've done on the side where it says here to use 2021 or year to date. Year to date is such a small group that it's not accurate at all. Um, it loses accuracy. Its accuracy is horrible. I remember doing that. So that's why I didn't include that in here. And I used 0401 instead uh, to current 0401 of 2021. So basically, this is how you do it quickly and easily. Then you've got all your forecasted uh, closing prices based on that. It's more accurate. No, it's not going to be 100%. There's no such thing as 100% because think about it. You've got all these things going on, Ukraine, Russia. Um, prior to that, you had COVID and all these other things. Um, based on what goes on in the real world, you can predict with this. But again, you need to go and uh, use a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm just telling you how to predict data in an accurate manner using uh, additive regression. Okay, and then I'm also showing you how different time periods can affect things. So using this NVIDIA data, looking at this here, obviously it's telling me it's going to go down in price over the short term. Now, I didn't do a very long progression or prediction here. So and you don't want to because see how the funnel starts to widen out as you go further. You know, your predictions, your accuracy drops drastically. Um, and there's a lot of things that could change in there. But again, looking at this and looking at the five year trend, obviously you've got far more accuracy in it going down than up based on this right here using different time periods. So when you do uh, use additive regression or REMA models or LSTM or any other prediction uh, methodology, remember to go and try different date ranges and look at the fit of your data. In the end, it is your look and how you interpret that. It is your determination as to what is better, which model is better, which date range period you should be using, um, you know, whether or not you should remove outliers, deal with seasonality, all those kinds of things. Thanks again for watching. Uh, this is great stuff to know, especially no matter what kind of company you end up working for. If you do data science, data analytics, you're going to be asked to predict stuff, whether it be forecasting sales, forecasting weather patterns forecasting, uh, supply, supply chain, all these things you will have to do. And this is how we do it on a daily basis. Um, yes, we go and make, you know, models and then we try to automate them. But even then you need to understand the methodologies and the math and the code behind them. Now, again, I didn't go heavily into code on this video because there are other videos that I've already created. You can go back and watch this. I don't remember. I did it on Bitcoin and and um, Dogecoin and and I think I've done it on Exxon Mobil and some other various stocks. So you can go back and look at those. I've done it in R, Python, and other methods, uh, other uh, applications. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to, to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day. Thanks.